Hey, welcome back to 2DG. 2. We've got another beer review. I know, some sort of consistency. <laughs> so what do we have today? This one we have a collaboration. It's well, been a little bit since we've done one, I think. Well, it's been a little bit since we've done anything, but... Um, this one is by Three Floyds, Shocker, I know, and Dark Horse, which has been a while we've, since we've done anything have from we them. We did plead the fifth. Okay, so wow, has been. Yeah. Uh, we did that, if you go way back, one of those original videos at uh, one of the local restaurants, we had Scotty Karate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that is way back at the beginning. Uh, this one, and it's got cool artwork, we'll show you. Um, this is called Oil of Gladness. Um, so this is a black barley wine. Never had a style, which I, I've never had a black barley wine. Um, I've had Three Floyd's barley wine, which is called Behemoth, which is yeah. delicious. Um, I don't think I've ever had anything from... Uh, dark horse. Um, but anyway, this one was brewed and bottled in Munster, so it's on Three Floyd's equipment, so your consistency should be there. Dark horse I like. I'm not the biggest fan of them. They do some of their, like Crooked Tree IPA, which is highly rated. Not my cup of tea. It's too malt forward. Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Anywho. What uh, makes this special, though? If you live in Michigan, what makes this uh, What makes this it special, special is because Three Floyd's does not distribute Michigan. So, all distribution, and this will probably be the first, well, not the first maybe, but one of the only Three Floyds products that you've gotten without crossing state lines. In Michigan. In Michigan. And that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm always for breweries getting places where they don't normally go. Yeah. Anywho, let's get it open. Uh, ABV on this cat. It doesn't say, but it's by Three Floyds. I'm guessing it's going to be pretty high. We'll look it up here in just a moment. But anyway, let's crack it open. They got the nice pink and green swirly cap, which surprisingly they haven't changed it, despite the fact they did redid a lot of their artwork. Yeah, I'm glad the cat stayed. I dig it. I do too. Anyway, um, they one of the other things that Three Floyds normally does is they put like some weird description on there. They didn't on this one. It's kind of odd. But anyway. Yeah, looking just like, you know, like a porter or something of that nature. Um, Not what I expected with the barley wine, generally. It does have a lot more head to it, though, than I was anticipating. Yeah, it's almost like it's got a lot of carbonation there, doesn't it? Should we get a close-up in on that logo? Oh, the logo. <laughs> Civil War concept. All right. So if you're familiar with barley wine style, it's normally like a deep amber ruby color. This is not it, hence the name black barley wine, but nice, basically dark all around. You get some sort of amber hues along the edge Barely. and then on the bottom. <laughs> um, head stuck around for a minute. We talked for a bit, admittedly. Um, it's still a little bit, but it's like yeah. a funky, laced, laced up stuff. Uh, Stiction yeah. is big time. pretty good. It's three Floyds ass. <laughs> Let's get a smell. Interesting. They use three Floyd's yeast. <laughs> it's almost, we'll get to that in a second, too, by the way. It's almost got a, on the tail end of that fruitiness of the yeast, it's almost like a, the overripe tomato. Which I think is a hop. So, um, quite fruity. Um, nothing distinct, that's the thing. It's more of just like your, not generic sweetness, but like, um, tropical, generic kind of yeah. fruitiness. Um, the yeast is there, though, to play with the esters. Uh, I'll say there's no sort of smell of, like, roasted malt or anything like that. To be honest... There's a slight little graininess, but... To be honest, I'm guessing they use a lot of the same bill that they do with Behemoth in this. I would think so. Because it smells fairly similar, uh, like a, a little bit more tropical with this one and not as much floral. <laughs> Frank looks stupid, I'm burying in there. It's just, this is one of those in the dead of winter, this is one of those that brings me back to spring and summer. The oh. fact that this has as much hop char characteristic left to it, this, I mean this bottle's two months old, so I mean it, it's on the verge of that time where it really starts to drop off in a quick manner, so I'm glad we got it <laughs> open when we did, but... Wow. I'm guessing they'll use a good amount of Centennial in here. Probably some Cascade. Yeah, I would say. There's also some sort of more tropical hop, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're using one of their experimental ones. I'm guessing not, um, but it's definitely not like Mosaic or Citra or anything like that. So I'm not no, entirely no, it's sure. Definitely more tropics. 
Anywho, um, let's go ahead and taste it's this. Great piece. smell. Um, why not call this a black IPA? Um, Basically, go ahead if you, go. No, I was just thinking the nose, it follows suit with the nose, really. Believe it or not, on the tail end I get a little bit of a overripe tomato, but then it melds into a real sweet, like you put sugar on top of a pink grapefruit. Not strong. But up front, it's almost slightly tropical. It's real sweet. So I'm not going to claim to have the best palate in the entire world. Um, but my first drink, and it took about three or four to try to get accurate on this. The first drink was a black IPA. I mean, here, here, here's, the, here's the crazy part. So despite the fact this isn't the traditional style of what a black IPA interpretation is, which is basically a, a simple malt bill, and then you throw in some like either super dark crystal or like black patent or something like that just to give it that dark color. It always, you know, gives off that toasted mouth smell and taste to, to a lesser extent. Nothing is in there like that at all, in my opinion. Um, the taste follows pretty well suit. Huge pop of bitterness. You're going to follow that with your generic hops, like your Centennial, your Cascade, kind of floral, spicy, mm -hmm. um, tropical characteristic. Tropical, I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, something particular. I'll say kind of peachy, I guess. Um, if you threw some like, I don't, I don't really know, like a super bitter peach type of thing, I guess. If I'm trying to describe it, um, well, actually, if you rubbed a ton of pine cone on a peach, um, I guess. Um, but after that, it drops off super dry. Not a lot in the aftertaste either. Um, now, after drinking a couple, I start to get the barley wine body in there. You start to get your dark fruit slash molasses-y type of flavor. Um, it really melds well with the hops. That's what's super impressive. Um, there's not a huge break of this is your IPA stuff, this is your barley wine, this is your you know black malt. It all flows together. Um, I'm super impressed with this. I could not disagree at all. <laughs> That's, it's a Epic stellar. Um, I, I, well, let me digress a little bit. I'm not going to go with the black IPA notion. I find it to be... Uh, the, the I problem, my mind on that a lot. But. Well, part of the problem is when you say black IPA, you think of this really thin, no-bodied IPA. But if you're familiar with Dogfish or, let's say, Three Floyds, their IPAs are real... Real good mouthfeel, generally. Um, and I'll go with that side. Uh, but there's a lot of flavor going on. Basically what he described, though. Um, there's well, almost a slight medicinal, and part of that's the bitterness. Um, my only complaint with this is it's a little too boozy. Really? Yeah. I, I really enjoy this. I think it has some do with that medicinal play that you were talking mm -hmm. about, though. Um, it just sticks there. After in the aftertaste, um, nothing that really jumps out though. I mean, this is balanced front to rear so well, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's almost deceivingly simple in, in uh, taste. Now, this says this balanced. is the commercial description from the label, so I'm guessing this might be from the Dark Horse one, but I'm gonna read it Three Floyds, Dark Horse. The two breweries got together to make a tribute beer paying homage to the infantry brigade of the Union Army during the U.S. Civil War known as the Iron Brigade, which I did not know. These black hats, consisting of Michigan, Indiana, and Wisconsin regiments, which I'm surprised they didn't pull something from Michigan, maybe like a New Galeris, yeah. um, regiments were fierce warriors with iron dispositions about it, without a doubt. Um, more importantly, they were also beer drinkers and craft brewers, and if they weren't busy kicking some rebel ass... Uh, if encampment was anticipated for long enough, uh, they would often turn a batch of homebrew to take on the trail to the next battle. Oil of Gladness is one of the many nicknames given to the beer these brave men were brewing out on the warpath. So I don't know how they found that information. That's super cool. Um, Even if it's all made up. <laughs> I think it is. It's a good story. Um, but anywho, um, let's, let's go to the ratings real quick. Yeah, let's get to it. 
Um, they have this in the style of barley wine, which I kind of expected. Um, so overall, or style-wise, they give it an 81. Um, overall, though, they're going to bump it up to a 94. It's one of those stupid things. Um, barley wine, where are you going? Barley wine, I'm going to go nine and a half. <laughs> what more to say? I mean, to be honest, maybe a reason. Well, I think it's an excellent example. I think it nails the style. I don't know what the big deal, you know, why the style was so low. I think it's a prime example of the style. The only complaint I'm gonna say is I don't, out of the flavor, the profile of the whole damn thing, bleak. <laughs> I don't know. That's not even. I don't know what role Dark Horse played in this. What do you mean? I don't taste anything that's not just Three Floyds. I mean, well, if you hand they, this to me, I'm going to go Three Floyds. Like I said, there's two different reviews on this, so there's two different, you know, they brewed this one in Munster, the other one they I would like to try the other one as well. I would too. Um, I too will go nine and a half, uh, only because it's a little too medicinal slash boozy for me. Um... I've had a lot of a lot of high ABV beers from Three Floyds, and they generally do a lot better at hiding that. Um, that being said, though, it's so awesome. So overall, overall nine and a half. Um, I don't jump to barley wine a lot, and you know, generally because by the time I'm getting to it, the new season's starting, and I like to hit those too. But this one is just reminiscent of spring and summer to me, and it makes me feel good this time of year, and it. Again, it's a nice warmer, but it's great. <laughs> um, I'll agree. Um, the complexity of it uh, with the unexpected balance of it as well is nice. Um, nine and a half, if you didn't. Sorry, that was my bad. Um, again, a minor complaints, but nothing major. Um, again, barley and wine, it, it's kind of one of those things. It's generally out... Not even so much in December for the most part. It's generally like early January until the end of February. Um, and then they kind of go away. Which, depending, I mean, there's some breweries that have barley wines, I think, anyway, for, for a longer amount of time. But I, I seem to think I see them like in the uh, late summer, early fall fairly often, too. Mm, uh, I mean, not really, because then you have your, your Oktoberfest and your right. pumpkin ales <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I've always liked barley wine for the most part. Um, it gives you... Oh, I like it. Yeah, it gives you that kind of sweet, malty thing, unless it's, you know, from, like, Stone or Three Floyds or something, with, like, Old Guardian and Behemoth, respectively. Um, and there's probably a ton more, nothing that I've had. But it's just <clears throat> one of those things where, you know, originally I, I wasn't a beer drinker of the seasons. I'll have whatever I want whenever. But here recently, in the last year or so, I've started to be more uh, seasonal. Um, you know, in the summer I'm drinking lighter stuff. The winter I'm well. Unfortunately, more production schedules kind of force you into it anyway. Yeah, but anyway, this is nice to have when it's you know supposed to be had. Hey, coming up real soon too. The 2017, the annual, third annual Douchey Awards. For those of you new to the channel, Douchey Awards are when we pick the best beer we rated. Or best beer we reviewed on the channel for the year, and the Sorry. best beer we drank off camera and for the year. We let you know what our favorites were. And I want to keep that as completely unreviewed, so no one tapped. What? Witter? No, you can't do untapped. I can because I don't do that much. No, that's my winner. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um. If you follow our untap, you'll see stuff that you don't see here. Now, before we do the douches, at least to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, we should have it two more reviews, I think, that's fair. I think, before then, and then we'll do that. At least, that. yeah. So, who knows? We might have a, uh, a dark horse, no pun intended, uh, late entry. Anyway, yeah. 2DG. See ya.